Hello everyone. Hello. Medical legal issues in dermatology have recently surfaced more than what they were in the past. And to discuss this, I have two of the stalwarts of dermatology, Dr. Venkat Ram Mysore and, and Dr. Kaushik Lahiri Namaskar. with me today. And together we'll discuss what is the changing scenario of the medical legal aspects of dermatology. Sir, uh, Venkat, uh, I would just like to know why do you think this things about the vulnerability of the dermatologist has come up now more so in the recent years and was it there in the past also or is that now that we are seeing that more of cases have been coming up? Sir? The medical legal cases have increased recently and that is because patient's autonomy as a concept is being recognized increasingly. Patient's rights to make a decision based on the right information that is provided by the doctor is being recognized across the world. Which means the onus is on the doctor to give that information. The onus is in the doctor to execute the decision as per the wish of the patient. And then there is accountability of the doctor whether he did the job properly or not. Once the patient has rights in these areas and in these areas of increasing awareness, social media, internet, etc., naturally more and more medical questions have been asked by the patients and that has led to an increase in recognition that doctors do not do the right thing always. And that has led to such an explosion of increase in the number of cases that we are seeing today. This is in general. Now coming to dermatology, the cases in dermatology have increased and it is no longer thought to be as safe as before for two reasons. One, dermatology field has expanded to include dermatologic surgery, cosmetic dermatology, etc. Which, have, which are no longer simple prescriptions and obviously they have more risk. Second, these relate to aspects of beauty and hence are choices made or sought by the patient. So patient is a healthy person otherwise and is choosing to do something. In other words, he is not just a patient, he is actually a client, a client in that no, sense. More of a client. So it's desire that he is choosing to satisfy. So this is the second reason. Third reason of course is this has come to the highlight because drug eruptions, particularly severe drug eruptions such as toxic problem necrolysis, have come to the court and the courts have taken a very stern view of the cases that were managed in those ways and have levied very heavy punishment on the hospitals and doctors. Dr. Kaushik, I just wanted to know whether you would say that is there an element of the lack of training in, in our curriculum or in the basic level where we are lacking to understand, uh, you know, aspects of, uh, you know, uh, medical legal aspects or kind of things to understand whether, uh, how would we go about if we were facing such a scenario or for you, do you feel there is a lack of knowledge on the part of the dermatologist? They just know about the curriculum. Dr. Munish, I'll take your questions. Uh, before that, I'll just uh, continue with uh, what Dr. Venkat right. was telling. Right. Uh, the situation changed uh, in early 90s, specifically in 1991-92, when our parliament accepted that the Consumer Protection Act will be applicable to medical services. And now it is our profession is a service and after you accept that in Consumer Protection Act, it's a trade. So it is a peculiar situation. Legally, it is a service as well as a trade. So, but both things cannot be right in the eyes of law simultaneously. Now, it is right that in the last 20, 25 years, dermatology has expanded like never before. And uh, like many things from disease dermatology to desired dermatology, and also from conventional modalities of treatment to various gadgets, what we use was unthinkable 25 years back. So all this complicated matter, but that does not mean that conventional dermatology, what Dr. Venkat has correctly mentioned, very recently one of the highest ever Consumer Protection Act was on dermatology and that related to one of uh, the unfortunate case of toxic epidermal necrolysis, where we don't have any control and there are two school of thoughts with steroid, without steroid. So as a doctor, we are in catch-22 situation and the legal process which is uh, uh, giving its verdict 
they are not medical expert. So this is, and there is a third part of it which we do not discuss, is the political part. That is, in all the states, we have clinical establishment acts. Now, this clinical establishment act, it sounds very nice on paper, but similarly, it increases the number of litigant, potentially litigant patients. Why? Because it is always patient-centric. There is nothing wrong in that. Because in India, we have 1,600 doc, uh, persons per one doctor. So it is much less than Ghana or Ethiopia. So the government will always be pro-people. Nothing wrong in that. But this clinical establishment acts will also, what Venkat has correctly mentioned, that make the people aware that here I can catch this doctor. So that is something very, very serious. But now coming to your question, that is there anything lacking in our curriculum? There is nothing lacking in our curriculum. Only thing was lacking is the human approach. Why a patient comes to a doctor? To get some solace that I can tell this to the doctor. But here, because of load work pressure, our young doctors, even the old doctors, they either commit something wrong or omit something what is to be done. I would say, like, is it always that the doctor is going to be always on the receiving end? Or do you feel that there are some ch places where if the doctor has done his job right or has there, has, there can be an error of judgment if there is some issue, whether those areas are little pardonable for the doctor or are they are always, it is like he said about patient-centric, but that is good. But then why it would be that way that always the doctors are at fault? Actually, the law is not doctor-centric. The onus is on the patient to prove that the doctor was negligent. Doctor doesn't have to prove that he is not negligent. The onus is on the patient to prove. That is why most consumer cases go in favor of doctors, not in favor of patients. patients. This is one thing to be recognized. But what happens is, the as doctors, once we have done our job, we feel very bad and we feel very upset when somebody goes to court. Right. This is because of the dichotomy, as Koshik pointed out. On the one hand, we are supposed to be an empathetic profession. Uh, it is supposed to be a service, which we do. And then, when something is done in that spirit, then somebody questions it in a consumer court, where he is acting as a consumer. So, patient is having a dual role. Patient, who, where he is entitled for some empathy and support, etc. But then, he can go to court as a consumer. That is where we feel bad. And courts have repeatedly said that genuine mistakes are not negligent. Right. And whether it is a mistake or not is to be decided by, proven by the patient, patient, not by the doctor. Right. So we should not fear. But what is happening is, mentally, because we treat, our, we think ourselves we are a noble profession, we are doing service, we cannot mentally accept that somebody, one of our patients for whom we did so, so much, much help, then... has gone to a court. Yeah, but then that is their right if they have been that is their, their right. right. If so they we have, have to accept that. accept that. We should not feel bad. We should assume that if you are there in the practice for X number of years, one odd case will probably happen that way. Yeah, we like Kaushik, like Kaushik sir said that it is now more of you have to understand when Consumer Protection Act comes, it is not only service, it is comes into a different category. So you have to accept that in particular thing you might need to be into this. So what do you feel like, what would we do, what can be the things which you will give the message, like for example now if we have uh, recently been seeing certain cases which, you know, maybe over enthusiasm of the younger dermatologist or is it something to do with the competition or what do they really, what goes the, through their mind that they go into something which is not practical or which is not medically right? So, I think uh, Dr. Munish, the answer is there in your question itself. Very rightly, you have touched all the points. Uh, it's not that only the juniors commit mistake, the seniors also commit mistake. Right. And it's not always that without committing any mistake also, you can uh, be dragged to the court of law. I can cite for not replying on WhatsApp. Right. But definitely that is not tenable, not to be continued as a legal process. But this can happen. Somebody can think that doctor is not replying on WhatsApp. I could not because I was in a country where there was no social media. I could prove that. That's another issue. But for our young guns, what happens? They started practice by taking huge amount of bank loan by investing on the clinic. Now the clinics are studios. 
and with uh, all the lasers, crores of rupees and all that. So they are also in a hurry to earn more money. By doing that, sometimes what is seriously being flawed is lack of sticking to the protocol. Mm. In all the laser machines or anything, we have the protocol. Now, when something goes wrong, it should not go wrong, if something goes wrong, when you are dragged to the court, who is judging you? They are not doctors. They will tell, okay, doctor, we have this panel. The panel will see whether the protocol well, was, was maintained or not. Yeah. So you need to, even if you were in a, in a hospital practice, all the records should be perfect. If the records are not perfect, you are in soup. Because anybody, hmm. may not be a doctor, maybe a judge, maybe a lawyer, can definitely find some flaw. That here it is written something and it has been done something. So these are the things you need to be very, very careful about. And another aspect is for this procedural dermatology these days, it is absolutely necessary to call the patient on the next day after doing any process, procedure. If anything goes wrong, within the next 48 hours, the patient should report to you. These are the small, small things. things. And when something goes really wrong, you can think that something has gone wrong. And even with my best of intention, I cannot control this. Spend some time with the patient, hand holding, calling the patient yourself. It is absolutely up to the doctor to build up a relationship with the patient and to make him understand, I have done the best possible for you, madam. And this is not exactly my fault. Medical science is not always two plus two. This can happen. This is very, very important. Thank you. And so, uh, Venkat sir, I just wanted to know, uh, like he mentioned about protocols. I think uh, accreditation nowadays and protocols, they are the in thing. We have always been stressing on the fact that electronic medical records, documentation should be all in line. We are trying to get the people to know that. And they are younger dermatologists and now I see that most of them have electronic medical records and even IDVL is trying to get into one of those electronic medical records for them. But the point is, in spite of that, still do you feel, sir, what are the prodromal signs or prodromal symptoms or what you would call it of a likely case of medical negligence or maybe a likely case of a litigation which would come up? Where would you really give some tips to people to understand, okay, but this could be the issue where you can have a problem? See, now in the current scenario or perhaps what in the emerging scenario, it is perhaps better to assume that any patient can be a potentially legal patient and with that point of view, have the documentation in place. So, which means that even if you are doing a biopsy or even if you are giving an interlesional steroid, you still have to take consent. Right. You cannot assume that I am just giving an injection, mm -hmm. so I will not need consent in that form. There is nothing too small to take a consent. There is nothing too small to take a photograph. Right. So this is one thing which has to be understood. Having said this, what are the warning signs wherein you recognize early that this patient can be a litigious patient? That's what you are yeah, asking. Right. Any patient who gets dissatisfied with your treatment or the result is a potentially medical legal patient. So anybody who is not happy, you must recognize early that if he is not happy, then I should make him happy in some way or the other. Then the second issue is the type of clientele if you can recognize. If somebody, this is more relevant for a cosmetic practice. Yeah. Somebody has gone around. Somebody has inquired many doctors. Somebody who is checking your background and then or is complaining about another doctor. I went to the doctor, he was like this, he was bad. These are the early signs that this patient can be like. So it is possible to recognize that with some experience that this is an early sign. But we are human beings too, so we may not be able to recognize in every single case. And then how a patient behaves before a particular treatment and when a treatment has gone wrong. These are entirely two different situations. The patient can be extremely polite and courteous in the early part and then when something goes wrong, he can become very hostile too. So you cannot behave what can happen at in that particular situation. Here one has to differentiate one more thing. Whether you are negligent or not, patient may feel that I wasted my money. Right. You might not have made your mistake, made a mistake, but my treatment didn't work for him. My melasma recurred. Yeah. 
I you did laser for me, you did chemical paint for me, but it has come back. So what is the value of money that I have spent? So you give it back. This is a different scenario. Yeah. So you have to reach a midway solution to that somewhere or try to see that the things you can try to do something and just uh, resolve the issue there and there if possible. Uh, Dr. Kaushik, if we would say, is there a way that is ever, as a doctor, have I got a right to refuse to treat a patient if I feel that this patient is likely to be a problem in the future? Like suppose at the outset, if you get the signs, if you start feeling, am I, say, we say have the right to talk, say that I wouldn't like to treat this patient? Yes, actually, uh, in case of emergency, we should not. Yeah. But if it is not an emergency and uh, if you have valid legal grounds and if the patient, doctor-patient relationship is based on trust, right. so it is bilateral. So if you feel as a doctor that the patient does not have any trust on you, definitely you can discuss that with the patient very politely and then if possible you can call the patient's family, discuss with them that uh, in spite of my best effort, there is no trust from your end. So it's better that you consult somebody else and document that, yeah, in, that the, in, in the patient's record and also in your, your record records. and make a, one of the witness from the, their uh, staff, uh, family and also your staff sign it. That is the legal document. Right. Two points each from both of my experts to just for the, not only for the younger generation but because most of our people of, of our fraternity are in dermatology are not so aware about the medical legal aspects. So two points each as a uh, expert that what would you say, Venkat sir first, what, what they should be careful about and how they should take ahead into this. Firstly, this is not routinely taught in the medical curriculum and a practice in a medical college setup is totally different from the private practice setup. So anybody who is starting private practice should recognize this and arm himself with proper knowledge about the different acts and rules and also perhaps serve under a dermatologist to know a little bit of these kind of procedures that are needed. This is number one. Number two, every dermatologist needs to recognize dermatology is no longer an absolutely safe subject. It may be safer when compared to neurosurgery or uh, gynecology or neonatology, but is certainly not absolutely safe. The highest ever compensation was given in a dermatology case and that to a general clinical dermatology case, a drug eruption, not in case of an aesthetic dermatology. So this is the second thing that has to be recognized. The third thing that has to be recognized is that whether you have procedures, whether you have general dermatology, documentation, documentation, documentation. That's what is important. Thank you. Dr. Kaushik. Uh, I think I'll take from another angle what Vinkat is absolutely correct, that those are the fundamentals uh, uh, to avoid anything. But basically, a doctor and patient is not exactly a relationship between two. It's a relationship between two different, uh, uh, like individual and two classes. So from the very outset, from the very first day, the relationship should be maintained properly. It's just like husband-wife relationship, it's a family relationship. The way you deal with your patient is very, very important. Absolutely. You may not be the best clinician in the world, you may not be the best laser surgeon in the world, though you may have best possible degrees, but everything is covered with how you deal with your patient, how you talk to your patient, how you smile at your patient, and this is the ultimate shield for avoiding any medical legal uh, incidents. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaushik and Dr. Venkat.